We've all had an uncomfortable, upset stomach that we hope will pass. But what if there's more to it? Well, here to share the science of SIBO is our gut health guide, board certified gastroenterologist at Cedar sinai Medical Center, Dr. Mark Pimentel. Welcome to the show, Dr. Pimentel. Thanks. It's great to be with you today. What is SIBO and how is it connected to IBS, which you also happen to be an expert on the topic? Yeah, well, SIBO is an acronym, and it stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth. Uh, and basically what that means is your small intestine, which is the longest length in the middle of your gut where all the food is absorbed, shouldn't contain that much bacteria. But in SIBO, it's, the bacteria levels have gone way up. As a result, they start eating your food and producing symptoms. We know now that there's this connection between SIBO and irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome affects 45 million people, and we think up to 60% of irritable bowel syndrome patients suffer from SIBO. At least that's what the data suggests now. Tell us, what are the signs and symptoms of SIBO? 20 years ago, IBS used to be thought of and shamefully as a disease of women with anxiety and depression. And I've even heard it referred to as a disease of hysterical women, which is a terrible uh, reference. But things have changed dramatically now. But the symptoms are you wake up in the morning, your abdomen is relatively flat, you start eating food, feeding the bacteria, and then you start to get bloating and distension. And, and physically, you will see your abdomen protrude. And then as a result of all of that, you can have abdominal pain, diarrhea, even constipation, depending on the type of SIBO that you have. What changes can our viewers make to their diets now, today, to ward off these SIBO symptoms? And we sort of call it low fermentation diet or low fermentation eating. You want to eat foods that humans digest. I mean, so things like fiber, things like legumes, things like non-absorbed sugars, which are the composition of many sweeteners that you use in your coffee and, and even now in a lot of sodas they use these. They have zero calories for you, but they're sugar for bacteria, and the bacteria ferment it a lot. And that's when you get all these tremendous symptoms. So you have to be careful with your diet.